So the first two uniforms we're going to look at today are the Indian Border Security Force and the Pakistani Ranger Uniform. Now, both these uniforms are in full display at the lowering of the flag ceremony at the Atari Wagah border. Now, first up, let's look at the Pakistani Rangers. The colors were grab our attention, the black. You got to bet in this hot sun, in this environment, these guys are sweating underneath, but you can't tell. You cannot see any perspiration on these guys. They are looking solid. They're looking intimidating. If you're familiar with the color black, this is one of the most aggressive, intimidating colors out there. And they match this with red. High contrast in red signals to people authority, power, strength. This is definitely a power suit. But the most obvious piece that grabs our attention is going to be that headwear. Now, on the opposite side, we've got the Indian Border Security Force, and their uniform is going to go with a lighter color. We see a traditional khaki right here mixed in with white with a strong red. When it comes to practicality, this uniform seems like it's going to be a lot cooler in terms of temperature. I really like the covers that they've got over their footwear, right? Those boots just looks really good. And when it comes to those small details, let's look at their headwear. Very similar. I think it speaks to the shared cultural and identity of both of these countries. But yeah, you look at those details right there in that headdress, got the gold mixed in there with the red. The Indians actually do it better than the Pakistanis when it comes to that headdress. Now, personally, one of the things I loved about the military is how they broke out everything, especially uniforms. They showed you exactly what to wear in what situation. You actually didn't have to think too much, which let's face it, when you got to make thousands of decisions a day is a nice thing to have sometimes. I mean, when it comes to your health, you know to go to the gym, you know to eat healthy, but are you taking care of your gut? Well, gents, to make this easy for you, I'm introducing you to today's sponsor, Ritual. I've talked about these guys for years because I love what they do. They make it easy to be able to take care of your digestive health with this new all-in-one symbiotic plus. This is a prebiotic. This is a probiotic. This is a postbiotic. And each capsule is designed with delayed release technology to help reach your colon, not your stomach. And each biotic has a clinical study matching the dose. Now, gents, as you probably know, prebiotics are designed to support the growth and activity of beneficial bacteria living in the gut. Now, probiotics are live microorganisms and are included to relieve bloating, gas, and mild and occasional diarrhea. Now, postbiotics, these provide fuel to the cells that make up the gut lining and support gut barrier function. Ritual is transparent with everything from the way each nutrient is sourced to the environmental impact. I'm linking to Ritual down in the description of today's video with the best deal you're going to find on the web. The deal is not going to be around forever. You want to use that link, use the code RMRS20 to save 20% off your first order of Ritual. And by the way, if you're just in the market for a daily multivitamin, I highly recommend their Essentials for Men. I use their products. Check them out. Use that link in the description description of today's video to get the best deal on the web. Next uniform I want to talk about is the Singapore Army's number two dress. If the layman were to actually see this uniform, I mean, they think it looks interesting, but doesn't this guy look like a waiter? But here's the thing with uniforms. They are specifically designed for a purpose, and this is their dining uniform. Now, notice I said that was the number two dress. What about the number three dress? What about the number one dress? So, the number three is going to be their day-to-day -day uniform. I'm not going to get into that one much. Pretty simple, pretty utilitarian. But that number one, ooh, that looks good. And I like that blood stripe they've got on the side. Reminds me of my United States Marine Corps. And you can tell right here the structure of this top jacket right here. The white crisp, clean. If you're wearing a white uniform like this, you better believe that this isn't something they work in day to day, but it is something that just harks back to a time when a man would simply take the time to dress well for every meal. And the fact that they've got swords, yeah, this makes me like them even more. Next up, we've got the Brazilian Independence Dragoons. So, this right here, the word dragoon, I believe this usually referred to horseback warriors, fighters, type of a cavalry here. These guys right here, I have to say that the uniform looks good. Not what I expected to be coming out of Brazil here. Overall, a clean, simple uniform. I know one of you guys recommended. And by the way, if you've got uniforms I need to check out, let me know in the comments below. Now, we see, of course, the red, but it's got that leather strap belt right in there. And they've got the side pouch. Just overall, a good looking uniform. Simple, not day to day. This isn't going to be their modern combat uniform, but I think for what it is, it's it's a good looking piece. And while we're talking about Brazil, I got to give a shout out. Somebody brought this up. The Brazilian Buffalo Soldiers. Yeah, you know, I checked this out. I mean, it's a police force, not soldiers, and their uniforms aren't really anything to write home about. But the fact that these guys are riding water buffalo, I mean, that was actually, I was like, wow, this is 
pretty darn cool. I actually had no idea that you could ride a buffalo like this. So thanks for whoever brought this up. Now, the first few uniforms I've talked about in this video, I didn't rank. And that's because they're unique. They're not really unusual. The unusual uniforms, those are coming up and I will be ranking them. So stick around. Now, gents, if you enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and smash that like button. And let me know down in the comments what uniforms you want to see in the future. We've been compiling a list, so I will be making more videos in this series. So coming in at number 10, let's talk about the cadets at the heroic Military Academy in Mexico City. So they've got a storied history and this is where some of Mexico's top military leaders have been trained and I have to say that their uniforms are spot on. Now, I can't imagine wearing a uniform like this in the hot Mexico City heat, but again, hopefully they've been acclimatized. But I think what just really sets apart, they bring in these eagles and if you're familiar with Mexico, its history, you understand the symbolism of the eagle right here. And it is like, wow, this is just really takes it to a whole other level. But when I look at the details on the uniform, first up, you know, again, they're going with a dark color. You're going to see this again and again in uniforms, but that dark color is there on purpose. It's made to intimidate. It also slims up the profile. If you look, they've got that red thicker stripe over on the leg. I think it would look a little bit better if it was thinner, but overall, you know, this looks good. They've got their, obviously this is not a modern rifle. These are more ceremonial rifles, but they've got the bayonets on them and the use, the small detail with color. And I like this when you've got a dark uniform, they've got the buttons going right up the sides. They didn't even need to go for a V, just going straight up and down, draws our attention right there to the front and the headwear. Simple, clean, gets the job done. Overall, good looking uniforms. Next up, we've got number nine, the Royal Guards of Hawaii. And as an American, I didn't even know that this unit existed. I went and did the research on it and apparently they were reactivated in 1962 and they're 100% ceremonial. But I have to say that overall, this is a really smart, clean looking uniform. It doesn't actually feel American. It's got its own flair, but it does have a little bit of a colonial type of feel. And I think it's all about that headwear right there. That type of helmet, the pith helmet has an English South African origin. So when I see something like that, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe I, I don't know actually the full extent of how they brought this into the uniform, but overall you've got something that's clean. It looks good. They're tops with that really dark, solid blue. It almost looks black from a distance. And then how they bring in that little bit of contrast with the yellow, again, the shoulders, you've got the epaulets right in there and the hat. I have to admit, I do really like the pith helmet. I will say that, uh, yeah, it just looks good. And overall, I have to give these guys pretty high marks, an unusual, a bit of a unique uniform that, uh, yeah, we find right here in the United States. Next up, we've got number eight, the Royal Melee Regiment and their dress uniform, just an awesome looking piece. And it's something that if you are an outsider, if you're not familiar with Malayan culture, you may not be familiar with the breakout, the different pieces of this uniform and basically their history. Now, if you're familiar with traditional Malay attire, you know that men are going to be wearing the Bayou Malay. This is accompanied with a sarong and it's wrapped around, looks like a skirt, but basically they got trousers on underneath. So when you look at the Royal Melee uniform, what you're seeing is their traditional clothing in something that I think is really smart, well put together, well fitted. And I have to say, you know, skirts here from a Western culture, it's something I'm not used to seeing, yet these guys pull it off and it really is an immaculate look. So really, is this unusual for me as a Westerner? Yes, it's something I could get used to. And I think these guys pulled it off. What I love is seeing a picture of these guys right here with the cold stream guard over in London. These guys look just as good. And I absolutely love, you know, seeing units work together like this. Next up, we got the Fiji Palace Guard. And again, I've talked about these guys, very unique look right here. You've got the high contrast red top with the bottom white. Now we're going to talk about that skirt, which is actually called a Sulu here in a second. But looking at the top overall, these guys are not wearing a heavy material overall, looking at those metals, just simply the way this is put together. It's a good look. Let's talk about that Sulu. This right here is one of the most unique pieces you'll ever see because it just right at the bottom and it's that little bit, I couldn't find details as to why it's cut that way at the bottom. But overall, this is something we see again and again in their military units. And uh, I didn't actually realize that for Fiji, their military is actually one of their important sources of income. Apparently their soldiers serve and do peacekeeping all around the globe. I also like the white gloves and the belt with that little bit of contrast. I'm not sure if actually that's a 
of leather in there with the white strap going across it. The only thing I would improve the sandals, I get it, they're probably tactical sandals, but it just seems like, yeah, not something that you're going to, I, I would go for boots, but it probably wouldn't mess up the look. Coming in at number six, we've got the Moroccan Royal Guard. And you probably notice a lot of these uniforms I'm talking about are Royal Guard uniforms. And that's where we see the pomp. We see the, you know, the whole peacocking, all the colors, all the fun, all the history. And I'm sure there is a lot of history with this uniform from the solid red to that blue cap right in there, to the boots, to the even weapon he's got, which is a really unique weapon right there. But what I don't like is that cape. Normally, I like a cape. I mean, I want to bring back the cape, but this one in white, too much of a contrast and it just doesn't seem functional. I get it. It's all about color. It's all about contrast, but this one really just doesn't do much for me. Now, when it comes to that hat, it comes in a variety of colors. As you can tell right here, we've got a green, which I like a lot better than the blue. To me, this just, yeah, makes sense with Morocco. You've got the white, you've got the green, the embroidery and the design in the front of the jacket. Initially, I didn't know if I'd like it. Looking at it more, I do like this. I think it draws attention to the chest and it brings back a history. This is, it feels like we're going back, you know, 200 years with this uniform. So, all that being said, the area, again, I think this uniform can improve is definitely changing the color, maybe even the design on that cape. There's just something about it that looks off. Next up, we've got the Greek Evzones. And I'm talking about their traditional uniform that we see with the Presidential Guard. And this uniform has been around for over a hundred years. And what I love about it is the detail. Everything that goes into this and the meaning behind each of the parts. First up, let's talk about that Fustinella. Okay, that looks like a lot of ruffles. What you got to understand is that is actually 400 pleats that reminds the Greeks of their time under the Ottoman Empire. And yeah, it reminds them what they're fighting for. Next up, let's talk about that jacket and the embroidery. Right there, we see dozens and dozens of hours that went into building each of these, which apparently are handmade and they've got unique patterns in them. They actually have storied history with this as well. Again, when it comes to a work of art when it comes to uniforms, yeah, I think the Greek of zones really take the cake here. Even that puffball shoe, apparently the puffball was there historically to keep the feet warm and to be able to hide a knife. I think there are more practical ways to hide a knife, but uh, more power to these guys. Coming in at number four, we've got the Mongolian State Armor Guard. And although this uniform was apparently made in 1955 or designed, it feels like you're going back to the 13th century, which apparently in Mongolia, you know, something they're pretty proud of, you know, Genghis Khan going across the steppe and conquering pretty much all of Asia and threatening Europe. This is the ceremonial uniform. Again, these colors, this is not practical, but when I see something like this, I see, hey, something that grabs attention. I really actually like their headwear. It just seems like it would actually provide some protection, but the overall colors there of that blue blue with that red, this is going to grab attention, very eye striking and relative, I wouldn't say practical in combat. Again, this is something that was designed for parades, something designed to be able to show off the might of the country. Coming in at number three, we've got a uniform a lot of you guys have seen if you've been to the Vatican and that is the Vatican Swiss Guard, specifically their gala uniform. Now, this gala uniform has been worn by Swiss guards since 1910. It's not their daily practical uniform. No, that's going to be their blue uniform. But this one right here for ceremony for basically at areas in which they're going to be in front of the crowds, this is the one that they wear. And another thing you may not know is that each one of these are hand sewn. So, each uniform is custom made for the wearer and whenever they phase out, whenever they leave, they stop being a Vatican guard. Guess what? That is destroyed. So, apparently, they don't want this going to anyone else. They want to make sure that they control this, which makes a lot of sense from a security standpoint. What I also love about these uniforms is that they're using actually historical pieces from the 15th century. Yes, so some of that headwear, some of those weapons, yes, they've maybe been cleaned up, improved, gone through a local blacksmith, but these are some of the original pieces that have been used for yeah over 500 years. And just in case you're wondering, yes, the guards are actually Swiss. Not all Swiss become bankers. I mean, this is a time period when Switzerland didn't have the banking industry and, you know, it was on hard times. So, sending out mercenaries was a big business for them and that's actually where the Swiss guard originated from. Coming in at number two, we have the South Korean Royal Palace Guards and you really get to see these guys in action during the gate change. Very unique uniform. Uniforms. Again, this is not going to be their practical South Korean uniform you're going to see up at the demilitarized zone. No, this is the stuff that goes back. They've all got historic meaning. And what I love here are the colors and 
the headwear. Let's look at those hats. Great for keeping that sun off your face. Maybe not so practical for, you know, full-on combat, but when you watch these guys, especially during the guard changing ceremony, you can see them using the various weapons. It doesn't seem to stop them at all, which goes to show the practicality of this uniform in simply being able to move. Now, when you look at the headwear in detail, what we notice are beads on the lower half and the use of feathers. Really cool, relatively simple, functional, and uh, yeah, I like it. And speaking of color and South Korea, let's talk about the Korean Military Academy and their uniforms. Somebody sent me, hey, this is the graduation ceremony. What do you think about this? I think actually pretty cool. Now, way overuse of color in my opinion, but what I love about Asia in general is that they don't have a lot of the same restrictions. They've got a totally different history. And if you're Korean and you're proud of it and you love the use of color, I really actually like these. When I look at the silhouette, overall well put together, the use of epaulets, it looks like they mix the modern with the old and uh, I like it. But if I had to be critical, I guess I would change up those hats. There's just something about the stripes, the black doesn't really work. I'd go for something even, I would go for something loud. And speaking of loud, let's talk about the number one set of uniforms on this list. Drum roll, please. Can you guys guess what it is? I've actually talked about these before. If you have been to the land of smiles, you understand that that country beats to its, I mean, they've got their own way that they operate from just simply the way that the people are, the way they interact, and definitely the way that they color their uniforms. Check this out. I mean, I didn't know that pink this yellow, you've just got colors all over the place. And I also like how the fact, I mean, look at that headwear. Now, in a previous video, I compared it to trolls, but you know, I, I think the trolls were inspired by these guys. Now, some of you guys may be familiar that Thailand has a king, but most people don't realize how much power the king still has over there. We think, you know, systems like this, monarchies, you know, oh, it's just for show, like over in the UK. No, over there, it is real. And the monarchy has a lot of power. So, when the new king came in after his father passed away, it was a big deal. And the military was out there in their uniforms. And we got to see all the different types of colors. You know, you look at the way they put these things together. They, yes, took some cues from the West, but they made it their own with the color and yeah, with the, with the silhouette of that hat. And I have to show you this picture right here because I find it really interesting that we actually see design on the back of uniforms. This is something I really haven't seen people pay that much attention, or at least tailors or the designers to the back end. And I think it just goes to show that this was either for specifically showing off in parades or yeah, someone had a lot of time on their hands. But in any case, it's, um, yeah, these are very, very unique. All right, Jen, so what video to watch next? How about which military uniforms are the most attractive, the sexiest? Guys, I got you covered in that video right there. And uh, I think I'm a bit biased. You know, I put the Marine Corps as number one. Actually, I did not rank the Marine Corps as number one because, hey, I just simply, I mean, they're a whole other level. You know, sexy can't describe us.